fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Dan Reed, the 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, was one of two passengers in the stagecoach that headed south toward the town of Bottleneck. The other passenger was a girl of 19 or 20 who had introduced herself as Betty Calkins. There had been a third passenger, but he had left the lumbering vehicle at a crossroads 15 minutes earlier. Dan, are you going to visit friends in Bottleneck? Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to call on an old school teacher. Oh? My friends were going to stay around Broken Bow for a few days, so it was a good chance for me to run down to Bottleneck. I see. You live in Broken Bow, don't you, Miss Calkins? Oh, yes. In fact, I was born there. My father helped build the railroad and establish the town. Oh, he did? Golly, he was a real pioneer. I is he still there? Oh, no, Dan. He died five years ago. Oh. My brother and I have kept house ever since. Yeah. Is your brother with the railroad? Mm-hmm. He operates the telegraph office. <laughs> I'd rather be an engineer. Would you, Dan? I'm going to marry an engineer. Oh, really? That's right. Jim Stevens, I... <gasps> What's the matter? Driver! Driver, stop the stage. Oh, Collie, what's up? Dan, I, I think I've been wrong. What's the trouble down there? Driver, didn't I have my bag here inside with me? Just a minute. I'm coming down there. Me? What's that you see, miss? My bag, my handbag, it's gone. Gone? I'm sure I had it here with me. Well, you did, I remember seeing it. But it's gone now. That other passenger, the one who left the stage, he must have taken it. I didn't notice, ma'am. Neither did I. Who was he, do you know? No, I never saw him before. I can remember what he looked like. Well, come to think of it, he made up his mind to leave the stage mighty sudden. <laughs> was there anything valuable in that handbag, miss? <laughs> It was three days later when Tonto rode into a small camp near the town of Broken Bow. The Indian friend of the Lone Ranger had written hard to bring a message to the tall masked man. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy. Kimusabi, me in town when stage come from south. Did Dan send word that he'd reached Bottleneck safely? Ah, uh, and him send letter. Me got it. What's wrong? Well, him tell about robbery. A stage robbery? Ah, uh, fella leave stage, take handbag a girl. Dan tell what fella look like. Uh, here, 
You read letter. Yes, let me see it. <clears throat> a girl's name, Betty Calkin. Yes. Let me see. The girl and Dan, both sure, fellow who leaves stage, take handbag. I'll describe the man as well as I can. You might see him if he shows up in Broken Bow. It's, uh, tall and thin, with very dark hair and a black mustache. Well, the other side. me see fellow who look like that. You did? Ah, him in cafe right now. Hello, I know of a man who answers this description. You know him? Sounds like Dude Lofgren. He's wanted by the law in Arizona. I'll saddle Silver and ride into town with you. We'll have a look at this man. It was nearly dark when the Lone Ranger and Tonto left their camp and started for town. A short time later, when the darkness had become complete, a westbound train reached Broken Bow. Pete Calkins came out of the telegraph office swinging a signal lantern while the engineer moved the train onto a siding. That'll do it, Jim. That'll do. My last car on the siding? Yep, you're clear. Hold it. Right. Good enough, Jim. Now you can climb down. Good. Thank the fires a bit, will you, Bill? Right. <laughs> I don't suppose you know how soon the eastbound's coming through, do you, Pete? No. Nope. If she's on schedule, you'll have a four or five hour wait. Seems like an awful waste of time to lay over on the siding and wait. Better to pull off on the siding than to meet the eastbound head on. We should have double tracks. That's what we should have. <laughs> Not that I mind waiting here in Broken Bow. How's my girl? Betty, she's all right. <laughs> you know, Pete, I, I could never figure out how a homely galoot like you could have a sister like Betty. What? <laughs> Is she at home now? Nope, she took the stage down to Bottleneck to visit our aunt. Ah, of all the doggone luck, I counted on seeing her this trip for sure. Too bad, Jim. Better luck next time. Didn't she know my train was due? Yeah, but we had word that Aunt Callie was sick. So Betty figured she'd better go and visit to see if she could be of any help. She said to tell you she was sorry, she'd be looking for you on the next trip. Well, that being the case, I may as well go to the cafe, wash up, and spend a few hours with the boys. In town, Toto had gone to the cafe to make sure that the tall, dark man was still on hand and then had crossed the road to join the lone ranger who was waiting in the shadows. We'll wait right here, Toto. When he leaves, we'll follow him. Ah. Lofgren works with a gang. That man is dude Lofgren. May lead us to a hideout. Time dragged slowly for the masked man and the Indian who waited in the darkness while they watched the batwing doors across the street. It was an hour before the tall, dark man came out, close on the heels of another man, one who wore the cap and overalls of a locomotive engineer. Look, Tonto, he seems to be following that railroad man. Ah, and what we do? We'll go along. Leave the horses where they are. Jim Stevens walked to the edge of town, then halted suddenly and turned. Say, listen, you. What's the idea? What's what idea? I saw you in the cafe. You were eyeing me mighty close. You left when I did, and you've been following me. Yeah, you're right. Now keep your voice huh? down. Oh, a gun, huh? Well, if this is a stick-up... It's up, not you... a stick-up. Isn't your name Jim Stevens? Yeah. What about it? You're the engineer on the westbound? Well... You put your train on the side until the eastbound goes through. Is that right? Yeah. You went on toward the west. What had happened? What had happened? What do you think had happened if two trains run toward each other on the same track? It'd be a smash-up. <laughs> Good, that's what I want. You're going to shove on so there'll be a smash. I'll do nothing of the sort. We'll make a deal with you. I'm it. not interested in a deal. My job is to take the train west and do it safe. Nothing you can offer will make me do what you want. Just a minute. You don't know what we're going to offer. I don't care what it is. I'm not interested. How about the life of your girl? What? Me and my pals have captured her, see? She's where she won't be found till we let her go. Her chances won't be worth much, Stevens. 
If you don't do what we want... Why, you dirty coyotes? Don't be hard. All you gotta do is start out toward the west, that's all. You can jump clear the engine for the smash. You're trying to run a bluff. You haven't got the girl at all. Maybe you'd better go along with me and see some proof. There's plenty of time. You don't have to decide right away. I'll take you to our camp. Show you the proof that we got the girl. Give you a chance to think it over. Come on. All right. I'll go with you. You here? Yes. Hello, we've got to change our plans. Uh, and what we do? You follow those two and find out where they go. I'm going to the telegraph office and try to prevent a wreck. Tuttle traveled on foot to follow the trail of Dude Lothgren and his prisoner, while the Lone Ranger mounted Silver and hurried to the telegraph office. Oh, oh, oh easy, steady, big fellow. Pete Calkins was on duty. He looked up from his desk where he had been making out reports by the light of an oil lamp when he heard the horse stopping outside. Hey, what? What's this? Take it easy. That mask. If this is a stick-up, mister, you've come to the wrong place. There's no cash on hand in this office. I'm not after cash, and I'm not an outlaw. Well, then, what do you want? Have you heard of Dude Lofgren? Lofgren? Why do you ask? Are you, uh, are you one of his gang? No. And what do you... Lofgren is planning a train wreck. You've got to prevent it. But a train wreck, you say? Yes. He's captured Jim Stevens, the engineer on the westbound. He's going to try to make him take the train out before the eastbound comes through. Why, that'll mean they'll come together on the single track. That's just what Lofgren wants. Ah, uh, Stevens wouldn't do it. Why, he'd be killed if he tried it. Not necessarily. He could slow down, then open the throttle and jump clear before the train got up speed. Ah, you needn't be concerned about that, mister. They couldn't make Stevens do any such thing. He wouldn't sell out. Oh, maybe not for money. But Lofgren's men have captured his girl. They have? They'll kill her if Stevens doesn't play their game. Oh, no. We may be able to keep the train from leaving here. But just in case we can't, you'd better get on that telegraph and tell the station west to hold the eastbound at Grants Pass. Wait now. Why not get the Lofgren gang? Because it's quite unlikely they're holding the girl in their camp. They probably got her hidden somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's so. Now open your key, clear the line, and get to work. Uh, maybe you're right. I'll try to get him to hold eastbound at Grants Pass. At least that'll prevent a smash-up if Jim takes the westbound out in spite of anything we might try to do to stop him. In the meantime, Jim Stevens found himself in a camp with Dude Lofgren, a man called Lefty, and several others of the gang. Now, Stevens, look this stuff over. you probably recognize some of it. This uh, pin here, for example. Yes. Now, if you want, I'll have the fire build up so as you can see better. I, I can see all right. These things belong to your girl, don't they? Yes, they do. And I guess you don't need any more proof that we've captured her. Where is she? What have you done to her? Oh, you needn't look around the camp. She's not here. But if you want to see her again, you'd better do as I say. Wreck two trains. There'll be some cash in it for you, Stevens, as well as the life of your girl. Lefty's right. There'll be plenty of gold aboard the eastbound. You won't have to worry about losing your job. You think I'd wreck those trains for money? All right, never mind the money. You wreck the train to save the life of your girl. Listen, Lofgren, if you're after that gold on the eastbound... That's why we... what we're after. And we aim to get it without running any risk. It'll be easy picking after the train is wrecked. Hey, you! What's hey. that? Hank's got someone. What's up? I'll fix him. Oh. Hank, who's that? What'd you find? Give me a hand here. Get along in front of me, Stevens. All right. I was coming into camp when I spotted someone hitting trees. It was this redskin. Ah, snooping on it. He heard everything that was said. I let him have it on the head with the barrel of my gun. Good work. Put him there with the fire till we decide what to do with him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. While the Lone Ranger was in the telegraph office, Toto followed Jude Lofgren to the outlaw camp, where he was discovered and knocked unconscious with a barrel of Hank's pistol. It's a good thing I saw the redskin hiding amongst the trees, eh, dude? Yeah, it's a good thing you saw. You must have hit him hard, Hank. It wasn't gentle. He's out cold. You gotta do something about him. Wonder how much he heard. Whatever he heard, it's too much. Being as I'm the one who cracked him on the head, I'll finish the job with a bullet if you say so, dude. No, that won't do. I can't leave murdered men around for the law to find. We've got to get rid of him. I've got an idea, dude. What is it, Lefty? Tie him up and put him on the train. He'll be killed in the crash. You can't do that. I won't have a hand you in much. You shut up. But I won't do Stevens, it. you're taking orders. You're going to take the train west and that's all. What else happens is none of your business. But it's murder. You want to see Betty Calkins alive, don't you? Why, you... How about it, dude? Should we put the redskin on the train? Yeah, that's what we'll do. Get some ropes on him. Right. Well, if the law sees him rope when he's found dead in the wreckage, won't it be the same as finding him here with a bullet in his hide? As long as he's not found near where we're camped, I don't care what the law thinks. Now, you ready to meet our terms, Stevens? All right. I... Don't you care about the life of your girl? If I could just see her for a you minute. You can't. She's not around here. Now, what's your final answer? Yes or no? I... I'll run the train. But I'll need a fireman. Hank will stoke the fire for you. Hank, you go over the engine right now. Build up the fire. Right. We'll break camp so as we can ride ahead and be on hand soon after the wreck. Uh, the Redskin. We'll bring him to the train when we've broken camp. Now, you get going. Build steam pressure. Kino. Stevens? Huh? Hey, boy. You stay here with us where we can keep an eye on you until it's time for you to go to work. The entire westbound train had been drawn up on the siding. The engine was some distance away from the small shack that housed the telegraph. Calkin sat before the clicking instrument with the lone ranger standing at his side. Was that the operator at Grants Pass? Yeah, yeah, it was. He said the eastbound hadn't passed there yet. Then there's a chance to stop the eastbound. But that won't do any good. There's no siding at Grants Pass. Even if the eastbound is stopped, it'll still be on the single tracks. If the westbound leaves here, it'll pile right into it head on. We're going to try to keep the train from leaving here. Tell the Grants Pass operator to stop the train, remove any passengers. But I... I... Hurry, man. There's a lot to be done after you've sent that message. Uh, all right, I, I'll do it. The outlaw known as Hank had at one time been a railroad man. He knew enough to slip the coupling of the engine so it would travel without dragging a long line of empty cattle cars. Then he climbed to the cab and built up the fire beneath the boiler. The pressure of steam had risen considerably when Lofgren and the rest of his gang rode up in the darkness. Oh, 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 oh. Hey there, Hank. How's she coming? Good enough. We got the red skin here. Reach down. We'll hand him up to you. Is he still unconscious? Yep. Here he is, Hank. Reach down and grab him. When I hit someone, they stay out for a while. <laughs> you got him roped, eh? Yeah. Here's the final word. You travel with Stevens to see that he doesn't try any tricks. You can travel slow till you see the headlight of the eastbound approach. And make sure the Indian's unconscious, even if you have to wrap him on the head again. Take off the ropes, and you and Stevens can jump after opening the throttle wide. Is that clear? Yeah, that's easy. There won't be any bullet holes in the red skin, so maybe the law will think he tried to steal a locomotive. Hi, Savvy. All right now, Stevens. We get on board. Hank, you keep him covered. Come on, Stevens. All right. All right. Get up. <clears throat> All right, you need to shove. I'm getting on board. Get over there to the controls. We'll have enough pressure to get underway in just a couple of minutes. By the way, Stevens, huh? you needn't worry about the regular fireman interfering. He's over in the cafe... He won't know the engine's pulled out until long after we're gone. <laughs> we'll leave you now, Hank, and start riding west. Right. Hey, dude, look over yonder. What's the matter, Lefty? There's a light in the telegraph office, and a horse pulled up outside. Someone must be in there with Corkins. You'll find out what's going on. <laughs> Steady, Easy, boy. boy. <laughs> Come on, boys. Get up there. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. 
What are you sending, Calkins? I'm telling the Grants Pass operator to stop the train, just like you said. <laughs> hey, leave that switch alone. You cut me off. What's your game? Well, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You weren't sending the right message. How do you know what I was sending? I happen to know the code. You what? You were going to send routine reports. Well, I... What's your game, Calkins? Are you working with Dude Lofgren? No, no. Then why didn't you send the message? I... I guess you win, mister. I'll send it. I'll see that you do and make it fast. Yeah, I'll make it fast. Uh, you! There! Get away from there! Now, no one will send the message. I shouldn't have given you a chance to smash that instrument. But you're going to pay for it, Calkins. No matter what happens to anyone else, I'm going to see that you pay in full. If those trains are wrecked, I I'm going... I don't care what happens to me. I don't count. I feel the same as Jim Stevens does. The life of my sister is more important than anything else. The life of your sister? That's what I said. What does your sister have to do with this? Everything. She's Jim Stevens' girl. It was no news to me when you came here and said that she'd been captured. Lofkin had already called on me and told me his plans. He told me she'd be released after he'd gotten the gold that's coming through on the eastbound. Wait a minute, Calkins. Your sister's name is Betty. That's right. She was on the southbound stage, going to visit her aunt in Bottleneck. How do you know so much? A friend of mine was on that stage, and so was Dude Lofkin. Dude stole your sister's handbag, but he didn't capture the girl. What? She reached Bottleneck safely, and so did my friend. If you doubt it, here's a letter from him. A letter? Betty, safe. But but Lofgren showed me some of her things to prove he'd captured her. Of course he had some of her things. He stole her handbag. Oh, that dirty lion. I've got to tell Jim. I've got to get to that engine before he takes her out. Get him out. What? What? You... Iced him. You're both covered. You too, Corkins. You seem to have come at just the wrong time, Lofgren. It depends on the point of view. For me, it's just the right time. We heard what you were saying. I know the truth now, Lofgren. You didn't capture my sister at all. All you've got's her handbag. She's safe and sound in bottleneck. <laughs> it's too bad you can't pass the word to Stevens. He's already on board the engine, about due to start out. What do we do with these two, dude? Shoot them and leave them here? I don't like to do that. I'd rather handle them the same as we did the Indian. The Indian? Yeah. Snooping Redskin we caught near camp. You two boys, come in here. All right, all right. boss. Take their guns and tie them up. Put them on the train with the Indian. Right, We'd uh, right. better knock them out first, boss. If Corkins has a chance to tell what he's learned to Jim Stevens, Stevens won't go through with it. Hey, we're too late, dude. The engine's already underway. Take a look and make sure. Meanwhile, you two keep your hands up. Yeah, it's gone. It's already left the siding. It's on the main line and heading west. All right. And we'll have to give it to these two right here. I don't mind drilling the mask, man. But I'm sorry for you, Corkins. Doesn't matter now. Lofgren, you'll never get away with it. Oh, no? No. You're going to jail. You'll be there for a long time. You'll be able to do a lot of thinking, but you'll probably never know how Tonto got off that train. Tonto? Yes, the Indian you captured. Tell them to drop their guns, Tonto, so they'll know you're behind them. What the... you! The outlaws acted instinctively and turned to look behind their backs. In that split second, the masked man charged, throwing his weight against Jude Lofgren and knocking the leader back against the others. Calkins closed in fast. Two of the outlaws stumbled and fell, and before they could regain their feet, their pals had been dropped by well-aimed blows. Lefty, lying on the floor, pulled a gun, but the masked man turned and fired from the hip. Oh! I'll get the other. Uh, that did it. My arm, my arm's busted. It'll be your neck if anyone dies in that train wreck. Lofgren is still conscious. He's trying to get up. I'll help you, Lofgren. Up no, you come. Back. Take it. No. And down he goes. Oh, can you have a gun? Disarm these men, then watch them till I get back. Where are you going? I've got to try to stop that train. <laughs> Easy, big fellow. Monsilla! The engine and the tender were traveling west at slow speed. It was no great task for the lone ranger on the mighty stallion Silver to overtake the iron horse. As he came alongside, he saw Jim at the throttle, Tonto on the floor of the cab, and a third man who held a gun. Jim, Jim, stop the train. It's all right, your girl is safe. Jim's eyes went wide. He reached for the throttle, but Hank jabbed him with the barrel of his gun, then swung the weapon toward the man who rode alongside. There were two shots. A bullet whistled past the masked man's head. Hank shot and missed, but not the Lone Rangers. Hank spun from the impact of a heavy slug. He clutched at his shoulder, then fell to the floor. Stop the train! Stop the train, I tell you! Betty is safe! Tonto was quickly freed and restored to consciousness. In a few words, the Lone Ranger told the truth to Jim. Then the engine was reversed and brought back to its place on the siding, coupled to the line of empty cattle cars. 
It was later. Jim and Calkins were alone in the telegraph office. Uh, I guess I've repaired the damage I did to the telegraph. Pete, how long you think those crooks will be in jail? You heard what the sheriff said when he took him in hand. They won't even go on trial around here until after they've served their terms in other places. <laughs> yeah, they'll be in jail from now on. Ah, that'll suit me first rate. Jim, you would have wrecked the train, wouldn't you? I thought that was the only way to save Betty's life. Were you going to jump clear? No. No, I wasn't, Pete. I was going to open that throttle wide and hit the eastbound as hard as I could in the hope that I'd take one of those crooks with me when I was killed. I don't know what I'd have done afterwards. But I can tell you one thing. I'd have hated to go on living with myself. I guess we're both pretty lucky. Lucky that that masked man dealt himself a hand in the game. Yeah, yeah. And lucky that he'd had a letter from that young friend of his who rode the stagecoach with Betty. Yep. I wonder who he is. Jim, here comes the eastbound. Yeah. Yeah, right on skin. There she goes. And that engineer will never know what he escaped. That's my signal, Pete. Time for me to take out the westbound. Uh... What were you saying, Jim? Oh, I said it's time for me to take well, I out mean, the... I mean, just before the train came through. Something about the mask man. Oh, oh I, I said I wondered who he is. <laughs> I can tell you that, Jim. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 